Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today at PPL Media Center at PBS 39. And joining me today in the kitchen is Chef Yanni Arantoulis of Micah Restaurant. Welcome. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's great to have you here. Excellent. What are we making today? So today we're gonna do a saddle of domestic lamb, and we're gonna serve it with eggplant and bonito. Excellent. Um, so it's a dish that kind of transitioning into summer, into fall, mm -hmm. so we have some eggplant, which is kind of a late summer ingredient. Mm -hmm. We're gonna kind of pair it with some nice smoke and grill and some big hearty flavors kind of going into fall. Sounds awesome, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with the lamb. Okay. So what we have here is a full saddle. It's domestic lamb, it is from Colorado. Explain what a, a full saddle of lamb means. Okay, the saddle is essentially, it's bisecting right here. So mm -hmm. you have the ribs that are closer up to the shoulders and then the saddle's in the back. Okay. It's made of two loins. Mm -hmm. So you have the loins on the top side. And then on the bottom, you have two tenderloins, okay? So oh, nice. the good thing about this is you get two pieces of meat mm -hmm. and bones and trim to make sauces and stocks and stuff like that. Excellent. So at the restaurant, we get full saddles if we're, unless we're gonna get whole, actual whole lamb. And uh, it's a pretty versatile piece of meat. So you do a lot of butchering in-house. Absolutely, yeah. It's, um, you know, we pr kind of pride ourselves on sourcing responsibly and getting mm -hmm. local ingredients and Which is so some important. whole animals, absolutely. So we work with a local farm called Erdenheim and they do uh, domestic lamb. Oh, wow. So we get whole lamb probably about once a month mm -hmm. and then we'll do a full butcher, we'll do some charcuterie and stuff like that. Very and nice. And then actually menu some of it. So at Micah we offer a a la carte menu, mm -hmm. which is a little bit more approachable. And then we also offer a $69 six course tasting menu. So Tuesday explain what through you mean Friday. by a little bit more approachable as so, opposed to the tasting menu. Absolutely. So the, uh, the a la carte is ingredients that you're kind of familiar with, mm -hmm. things that you've had or cook at home presented in a more of a contemporary kind of way. Okay. Um, it's all based on, again, good properly sourced ingredients mm -hmm. and good cooking technique. And then if you want to go a more ambitious route in regards to flavor profiles and different techniques and something a little bit more modern, we offer the tasting menu as well. Very nice. So what we have here is I pulled the two tenderloins off the bottom, and now I'm just taking each loin off the top. Okay, great. So we're going to come in. There's a little bone right on the inside. You kind of score yourself down. You're doing a great job of butchering this. Now, how many seats do you have in the restaurant? So we have 30, we can seat 32 people. So it's a little bit on the small side. It's but manageable, intimate. exactly. Mm -hmm. Intimate, romantic, it's, uh, it's warm, inviting. It's, it's a good place to kind of just come, relax, bring your own bottle of wine. And, and it gives people the opportunity to kind of order more food, try some new things, and bring some I wine <laughs> that they have home, at home, you know? Yeah, great. So we have both loins taken off. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna clean up one that we're gonna cook today. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of take this little cap off right here. Such a nice looking piece of meat yeah, too. It's, it's so bright and red. And then you have a little bit of silver skin here, mm -hmm. which will not break down during the cooking okay. process. So we're just going to gently take that off. The lamb is a pretty fatty animal. For the most part, yeah. Um, this is actually a full grown lamb, so it does have mm -hmm. a decent amount of fat. Once you yeah. get into the spring and you get true spring lambs, they're mm -hmm. a lot leaner and a little cleaner in flavor. Right. Okay, so now we have this. It's all cleaned up. We have a little bit of roasted garlic oil. Oh, yum. And is this just a vegetable oil? Yep, so okay. we use a pretty neutral oil, mm -hmm. canola, grapeseed, something like that. Yep. That's a pretty high smoke point. And then we just gently poach the garlic in the oven. Mm, with the oil. Almost like, like a confit garlic. Exactly. A little bit of black pepper. No salt. I don't like to add salt in marinades. It starts to uh, actually denature the proteins. Okay. And um, it'll actually start drawing out moisture from the lamb as opposed to adding it in. How long do you let this marinade for? So I'm going to go anywhere from about 45 minutes to about two to three hours. Okay, so not too long. Yeah. And would you salt this right before you cook it? Exactly. So we season before we cook it and then mm -hmm. we'll season again after we cook it. Great. And then we just have some herbs that we'll add. And you have a great selection of ingredients. Do yeah. a lot of these herbs, do you have a garden? We do. We have a little herb garden in the back. Mm -hmm. We do some outdoor seating that we kind of take advantage of in the spring and fall. Nice. Um, and we got all pots and herbs and stuff like that where all the stuff is actually from. Beautiful. So the first thing is the eggplant. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful, beautiful eggplant. Absolutely. So this is fairy tale. Um, this is actually a graffiti eggplant, but mm -hmm. fairy tale is an heirloom. They're a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. We source them to the point where we actually go to the farm and pick out the sizes that we want to really? use. Really? Yeah. What we're gonna actually do is submerge it in a pickled garlic brine. Wow. And then we let it sit anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. So what it does, it actually adds moisture that mm -hmm. you want. So right now we have vinegar. Did you put any salt in there? 
What's that? We will. Put any salt? Yep, and, and salt will actually help draw out the moisture. So okay. we're going to start the brine, and then we're going to work our way into the actual marinating process. So right now, I just do. It's pretty simple. It's just um, equal parts sugar, white balsamic vinegar, mm -hmm. and a little bit of water. Now, white balsamic. Why would you use that as opposed to another vinegar? It's very clean. It has this really subtle sweetness to mm -hmm. it that I think is pretty versatile and goes really well with pickles. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. We now return to the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to slice our garlic nice and thin. And I see we have some already brined eggplant here, and what you notice right off the bat is how different the colors change. Exactly. The pigment in here is called mm -hmm. anthocyanin, and okay. it's water soluble. So we're going to add water to it, and what it's going to do is actually going to start bleeding into the rest of the eggplant. I'm always picking the garlic cloves out of the dill pickles and eating <laughs> garlic. Fair enough. Can't get enough. So as soon as this comes up, we add the garlic, mm -hmm. and then we're just going to shut it off. So you just let that kind of hang exactly. out. Exactly. We just let infuse. it steam. And we go from anywhere from preferably more than an hour. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of clean it up just a little bit. Okay. So after we kind of clean up the top there, we're just going to split it right in half. Okay, great. And I notice you leave the skin on. Yeah. So we leave the skin. It kind of helps mm -hmm. char it and kind of add a little crunch to it. What we're going to do now is just kind of score the egg. Okay. And what's that do? So it kind of opens it up a little bit, allows that brine to kind of permeate a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. And it also just for aesthetically. It looks nice. It does look nice. With Micah, mm -hmm. you just recently purchased the restaurant. Correct. Tell me about that. Yeah, so the previous owner was Chip Roman. Mm -hmm. um, we love Chip. Yeah, Chip is fantastic. I worked for Chip for almost five years. Awesome. Um, and we got to the point where, you know, I was running his restaurant at Blackfish, mm -hmm. and um, he brought the opportunity to me. He was kind of looking to rein back in on Blackfish, mm -hmm. and then um, really kind of focus on his family and in Conshohocken and kind mm -hmm. of stay grounded in one area. And this was an opportunity for me to kind of buy a restaurant that's not too large, that's manageable, mm -hmm. and allows me to kind of be creative and spread my wings a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little bit of this pickled garlic. And you always brine it just on a plate like that? Um, you can, it's best to kind of submerge it. We actually, okay. at the restaurant, we'll cryovac them. Mm -hmm. So we'll put oh, them wow. in almost like a marinade them and then cryovac them, and that'll really kind of help. Mm -hmm. So after we, we're just going to season the face a little bit. All right. And we're going to flip them over. And these are going to kind of release a lot of their own natural moisture and then absorb that Obs brine? Exactly. Cool. Osmosis will occur and then it'll kind of transfer. Osmosis. So we're going to let these go. We're going to make a vinaigrette with raisins. Mm, okay. yeah. This is going to be... So to start with the, the raisins, we're going to call it almost like a raisin escabeche, which is kind of like a... Uh, Something that's been preserved with a substantial amount of olive oil yeah. and acid as well. Mm. Usually done with like fish or mackerel or right. something like that. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to slice down some shallots. Raisins and things always remind me of Sicilian food. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially the eggplant. And any reason why you're slicing the shallots as opposed to mincing them? Um, I like the consistency, just the, you get a little bit of texture, and yeah. you'll see with the finished product that it actually, uh, it adds some texture to it, which is kind of nice. Nice. A little bit of sliced garlic. Yeah, usually when you have a vinaigrette, you usually see everything minced, minced up really up fine. Minced up really fine, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, what we're going to do is we're just going to start sweating this out. A little bit of olive oil. Olive oil? Yep. What kind of olive oils do you like to cook with or use? Um, I like, I actually like California olive oil a lot. Mm -hmm. I think I always try to find something that's pretty fruity. It smells um, really fruity, actually. Yeah, and then, so this is, it's going to be very gentle. You don't want to go too hot and smoke okay. the olive oil and kind of burn off all those nuances and aromas and all the flavors that are kind of characteristic to that particular one. Okay. So now that that's sweating, what we're going to do is we're going to add some spices to it. So we have coriander. Coriander, the seed of the cilantro plant, right? Correct. And then whole black peppercorns. A quick little trick, kind of slide them in a bag and just gently break them up. This is a good tip. I like that you're using a pot, too. You're not using <laughs> like a meat mallet or a rolling pin. So if you, I want something that's going to have texture. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to add some cracked coriander so and a little bit of cracked pepper. You really That's just it. cracked them. Exactly. You weren't getting those too fine. That's it. Nice. 
We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. We're gonna start our sauce. Bonito or katsubushi. It's a dried, fermented tuna. Which I keep getting whiffs of. Exactly, <laughs> so it kind of imparts, it kind of plays on the whole grilling. So mm -hmm. it imparts this really kind of umami, makes your mouth water, this really smoky flavor. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna make a tea out of it. Bonito tea. Yep, so then a little bit of water, bring it up to a simmer. It really does have so much flavor. You get those fishy notes, but then you also really taste like that acidity and that fermented taste. Exactly, the smokiness. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we just kind of steep that in water. Yeah, okay. it's almost reminiscent of a, like a tiny smoked salmon. Yep, so we're gonna let that go for about 45 minutes. Okay. So now our shallots and onions. They're starting to sweat. Do you want to get any color on these? No or color. Not at all? Yep, it's just to kind of start the process. Mm -hmm. And you'll see what we're gonna kind of do to this in a couple minutes. Smells great already. So it's starting to get translucent. Mm -hmm. Sweat down a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit of salt just to kind of help draw out that moisture. We're going to add our raisins. Okay. okay. And a little bit of blended oil. Okay. And the raisins are gonna kind of absorb. So they're gonna start toasting a little bit. Okay. Start kind of blowing up. And then this is Banyol's vinegar. What is Banyol's vinegar? So it's a um, it's a grape vinegar. It's very sweet, very similar almost to like sherry vinegar. Okay. What we're gonna do is to kind of go on the whole escabeche, we're gonna add a good bit mm. of olive oil. We're gonna let that kind of come up to a simmer. Okay, so now we're gonna strain our Bonito tea. So we just pass it through a fine sieve or chinois. Mm -hmm. That was pretty quick. Yeah, and we're just gonna reduce that down. Let's so reduce it down by about half, actually. Okay, right. really concentrate that flavor. Yeah, so now that everything's kind of working here on the sauces, we're gonna bring the grill in, and we're gonna start grilling the eggplant and the lamb. Nice. Wow. Perfect, let's set it right here. So this is a Kono grill. It is made of fired bricks, which are incredibly well insulated. Wow. So what it allows us to do is really kind of build a nice, clean fire rely on the coals to kind of cook things, not direct flame. Wow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with our lamb. Okay. So it's been marinating. Mm -hmm. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna season it. And you leave those whole peppercorns right on there? Yep, we're gonna kind of fall nice. off a little bit. Yeah. But that'll eventually get uh, kind of pulled off. A little more salt. And then we're just gonna gently brush it with a little bit of roasted garlic oil. Mm. So we're gonna come over here. I love lamb. It's my favorite, <laughs> it's my favorite meat. That's good stuff. So we're just gonna gently the meat right on top. You hear that sizzle? Oh yeah. Take that. Thank and you. I notice you're using, you're not using the, you know, charcoal briquettes in there. Exactly. Yep. We use hardwood charcoal. Mm -hmm. It's a lot cleaner flavor. Yeah. It's not something that's been overly processed. Um, and now we're going to add our brined eggplant as well. So this was going for about, about half hour, 45 minutes. You can see how it really has kind of changed. Oh yeah. It almost looks cooked. And I love how you leave those pieces of garlic on there yeah, too. Yeah, we'll cook right into it. So now that our lamb's cooking, we're gonna go fat side down first. Once we get a good amount of color on the fat side, we're gonna flip it over. Wow, so a real good amount of char on there. A nice char, mm -hmm. yep. It's really gonna add to the dish. Same thing with the eggplant. So we started with the skin side first. Mm -hmm. Wow. See how it really kind of crisped up? Yeah. So we actually, I have a piece of lamb and a piece of eggplant that we have resting. It's rested for about six, seven minutes. During the resting process, what happens is you're kind of redistributing all that moisture. All that moisture that's kind of pushed to the outer uh, pieces of the meat, mm -hmm. it's redistributed in. So then when I go to slice it, it'll actually, that juice will stay in the meat as opposed to kind of leaching all over the cutting board. Very nice. Yeah. So we have our reduced Bonito tea. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of fresh Bonito. What this does is just kind of fortify that flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll add it in right at the end. Splash of fresh lemon juice. And then we're gonna take butter. Mm, butter. Yep. It's almost like a bonito demi-glace. Exactly. So you have this really <laughs> intense broth on the bottom. And what 
we're going to do now is we're just going to emulsify butter into it. Great. So if you want to start whisking, sure. just whisk cold the butter. butter, cold butter right into it. Okay, so now the lamb is pretty much where it needs to be. Okay. So our vegetables and our lamb are all grilled off. So now I mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. I always like to season before and after you. Yeah. Cook. Okay. So now we're gonna brush it with a little bit more roasted garlic oil. Especially when you grill, a lot of that seasoning will fall exactly. off. Exactly. And then a little more salt. And the same thing with the eggplant. Brush it with a little garlic oil. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. So now with the eggplant itself, we make a crumble. Um, and this crumble, it's also called furikake. Okay. It's um, like rice seasoning. Yeah. So it's a mixture of bonito, seaweed. We use a little bit of nutritional yeast, which has like mm. this kind of cheesy element to Interesting. it. Interesting. And then fried shallots and sesame seeds as well. You really have such an eclectic array of ingredients in this dish. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a, I don't, it's definitely fusion. Sure. Um, but uh, it's more of flavors that kind of go well together mm -hmm. that you might not really think of. I definitely that. wouldn't have thought of this myself. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is just kind of cover the top of the eggplant with some of that. And is this something I, we could find on your a la carte menu or more of your tasting menu? So this is um, this is actually on our a la carte menu. Mm -hmm. You can probably get it for the next, probably I would say about a month or so. Um, and then we'll kind of transition into maybe a braised product or something like that. Okay. So and now we're just kind of seasoning this eggplant. So lots of different fresh herbs. Yep, fresh herbs. We have oregano, we have some chive, we have the furikake all over the top. And then this is a little bit of lemon oil. Oh, really? Do you make that in-house? We do. How so do you make we, that? So we use a little bit of actual lemon extract, mm -hmm. olive oil, and fresh lemon peel. And we just nice. let them sit for about about six months. Oh, wow, that yeah, long. Yeah, for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So the bonita butter's starting to look really good. Cool. What we're going to do is we're going to pour it into this pot. So this is a little bit more bonito butter. And okay. what this is going to do is allow me to kind of hit it with a stick blender oh, and right. kind of decrease the surface area so okay. I can actually get to the bottom and emulsify it. So what we're going to do is just make sure it's nice and creamy. Mm. You can kind of see it. It's starting to foam up a little bit. It's gotten light in color. So we're going to bring our butter up to a simmer. Okay. And then we're going to start plating. We're just going to gently slice it in half. Hmm. You have to be really careful not to knock all of that good exactly. stuff off the top. Exactly. You put all that yummy stuff on top, and then we're going to go right to the plate with it. Do you want this butter to come to a boil? Yep, it's going to come okay. right up to a simmer. Then our other eggplant. And then we have our grilled lamb. So it's rested, it springs back real nice. Just like a nice yep, medium rare? Exactly. And then what we're going to do is just kind of square up the back. Beautiful. Perfectly cooked. You can kind of hear that crunch. Yeah, you can. This looks incredible. And those little pieces that you cut off the end, those are like little chef snacks, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keeps us get, you know, going through the night. Absolutely. So we're do is Need just that protein. Hat. You can turn that down for me. Sure thing. Perfect. And then again, a little bit of oil. Nice. Just and to then kind of brush it and season more it. More of that salt on top. Exactly. So now we're going to go right on the plate with these. Very linear plating. Yeah. So you have, you know, the lamb, everything is very elongated. So we kind of play off of that a little bit. So now we have our raisin escabeche, mm -hmm. which is, so it's been kind of, you can see the raisins kind of plumped up oh, a little bit. Oh, super plump, yeah. Everything's kind of melted together. The shallots are still there, but you can mm -hmm. see they still have the kind of texture that I was talking Gorgeous. about earlier. Just a couple little piles. And then what this is going to add is you would think, you know, raisins, it's going to add sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. But actually, based on that Banyol's vinegar, 
it's really kind of sour. So it adds this really kind of complex, sweet and sour nice. kind of spicy note. Like an agri dolce. Exactly. And then we have our bonito. Just to kind of keep the plate looking nice and clean, we would go on the side with our sauce. Oh, so you serve that completely on the side? Yep, so, and then we'll pour it table side. Okay, great. So we'll put it in just like that. We're gonna add a little bit of basil oil. So mm, this is just blended oil infused with a little bit of fresh basil. Wow. And that'll add a nice little sweetness and fruitiness to the plate. Mm. And then we are going to just add some herbs. So this is a Nis Hysop. It's um, spicy, kind of licorice in flavor. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite, honestly, you know, most people, lamb, garlic, but I think lamb, marjoram, ma lamb, and oregano are mm -hmm. probably my two favorite things. Very Greek. Yeah. <laughs> Gorgeous. Then, Fresh oregano has such a different flavor than dried, too. Absolutely, yeah. It's like floral. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple little pieces of basil to play off that oh, sauce. Oh, beautiful little micro basil. Yum. Okay. Such artistic plating, also. Thank you. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's absolutely. bring it to the table. Lovely. Okay, so now that we have it plated, we bring it to the guest and then we would pour our sauce. So you can kind of see. Wow. You get this really nice kind of rainbow yeah. from the oil and the actual bonito Just itself. like marbles right in there. Yep. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. You're welcome, here's a knife. Excellent. This looks awesome. I wanna get everything in one bite. Yeah, that's the idea, good. And I'm gonna take too big of a bite. Mmm. <laughs> Wow, there's so much going on in my mouth right now. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, except it's delicious. Mm. So you get the lamb, you taste the eggplant, you taste the mm -hmm. basil, it's all it's It all, all comes together, all yeah. it really works, and the eggplant is so nice and creamy. Good. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's my pleasure. It was a pleasure having you. Everything was excellent, and I look forward to visiting you at Micah many times. Please come, thank, thank you. you. It was fantastic. I mean, it's nice to kind of get out of the kitchen and break up the kind of daily grind a little bit. Um, Nicole's awesome. She knows a lot about food, which actually makes my job a little bit easier to kind of talk and go through everything. But uh, it's been a pleasure. It really has.